if I want to find the angle of little b, cute little b, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're given a right triangle, and we're given two values. I did say little cute b. Um, we could obviously use the Pythagorean theorem, right? The what? Pythagorean theorem, right? So we could easily use that to find c. However, since in the spirit of trigonometry, we're going to hold off on the Pythagorean theorem, and I'll just work with using our trig properties. So you guys raise up a very good question. So far, we've been so used to using our trig properties because, you know, we said that, um, let's see, this would be <coughs> sine of your angle A equaled your opposite <coughs> over your, um, your hypotenuse, right? But before, we had one of these rows missing, correct? And what we did was we just multiplied it on the other side and we solved for, we solved for our missing length. Well, now our angle is missing. Now we don't know the value of our angle. So what have we been working about in this chapter to find that length of the angle? We have to use the what function? Sine function. Inverse. Well, you? Yeah, you're gonna, exactly. You're going to have to use the inverse function of this. Why? Right? Well, remember, remember when we were whole talking about you know inverses, you're, to find your function, remember the sine of an angle equals the ratio of the two side lengths. Yes. So if you're giving your two side lengths to find that angle, you're going to have to be working backwards, right? You're going to have to like undo it going back to using your inverse. So what I can say is sine inverse of 25 over 35 equals A. And that was the whole thing you guys worked out with 91 and 92. Sine of A is equal to 25 divided by 35. Sine of A equals 25 over 35. So but remember, sine is, a, sine is a function. So it's the sine of your function angle oh. equals the ratio of your two side lengths of your triangle. So if you just want to find what exactly is that angle, we're going to have to use the inverse function of that ratio. And then we're going to have to use sine again. Well, I don't know. It depends. Let's just figure out what A is. So if I do inverse sine, so I take my lovely nifty calculator, inverse sine of 25 divided by 35, I'll get 45.58. Okay. <laughs> Did I follow me, Cody? Yes. Good? Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, from here, now you know this is 90 degrees and this is 45.58. We can easily figure out what B is, right? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Just add them up and then subtract from 180? Yeah, pretty much. Right? Yeah. We can also use a trig function, though, and I'm just going to use another trig function just to make sure. Now, like I said, I am rounding the angles, so we're not going to get some exact numbers. But let's just use another inverse trig function to determine it. If I was going to use angle B, if I want to figure out angle B, I have A, which is now my adjacent, and C is my um, C is my hypotenuse. So I would have to use the cosine for B. So cosine of angle B equals 25 over 35. Did you guys see how we have to use sine for A and cosine for B? Because this angle, this these two side length or this side length means different things to the different angles. Does that make sense? That was yeah. kind of like that question you guys asked before. So therefore, B equals inverse cosine of 25 over 35. And let's just go ahead and check our work here. Make sure that even though you could use Pythagorean theorem if you wanted to, or the um, all the angles in a triangle add up to 180, what I get is... Forty-four point four two. So, just for um, for fun here, if I add up forty-four point four two plus forty-five point five eight plus ninety degrees, I should get one hundred eighty degrees, and that's exactly what I do. Okay. All right. Now, like I said, guys, I'm just rounding these to get my correct answers. But you guys notice now that's how I got my two angles. Make sense? You could have easily, guys, just once you figured out this, added to ninety and subtract from one eighty to get. 44.92. 44.42. Yes, you have a question? Sam, you have a question? No. Okay. All right. So lastly, if I want to find B, I could use Pythagorean theorem, right? Let's just do one more trig operation, and I will give it to Brittany. Which trig operation would you like me to use for B? Do you have any idea? 
Yeah, to figure out what the length would be. We have all our side lengths for A. Which trig operation would you like me to use? The angle beam? Sine. Okay? So if I'm going to be using sine, I'm going to have to use sine of my angle B because B is the opposite of that angle. So to figure out this side, I'm going to have to say sine of 44.42 is equal to the opposite, which is B, over my new my hypotenuse, which is 35. Right? Sine is opposite over adjacent. Well, B is opposite of this length. It's adjacent of that angle. So now to solve for this, I get 35 off the bottom. <coughs> so therefore, B equals 35 times sine of 44.42. So when you guys go ahead and plug that into your calculator, 35 times sine of 44.42 you get 24.50, rounding it. Cool? Make sense? You guys think you can do your own triangles? No. No? Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah.